expectations for Kentucky before the season, and what are they now? Uh, before the season, I certainly didn't expect them to be 6-0 and and playing in a top 11 game in the first meeting of two SEC East teams, 6-0 and or better, ever. Uh, I expected them to be good. I thought their offense would be improved with the, with the new offensive coordinator, but their performance up to this point has, uh, has surprised me and impressed me. I, I think the expectation now, uh, because I don't want to be disingenuous, is that they aren't um, as good as Georgia. I don't think my expectation is for them to play in the SEC championship game, but that's why you play, and you put yourself on this stage to give yourself an opportunity for such things. And Kentucky, uh, if it can pull a stunner on Saturday, then my expectation would be that they finish the deal and go play in the SEC championship game. So. Boy, that was easy world now. <laughs> Good question, too, by the way. I would, I, would like, I would like everyone to take note of that question. Open, neutral, lean. You guys know what that is? The question was open, it was neutral, did not assign a value, and it was lean. The great John Sawatsky, the greatest interviewing guru on the planet, would be quite pleased for your question. It was excellent. It was excellent. Excellent. So, Reese Kirby all week talked about Kentucky being physical. He said the past few years, every time they play Kentucky, it's always physical. What does that O-line bring to the table, and do you think they can challenge this Georgia defensive front that everybody raves about every week? They will, they will not back down from them. Uh, that's something that I think Mark has made a hallmark of his program. They always play tough. The question has always been, do they have enough explosive speed? Uh, they have enough weapons on the outside. Now with Wandale, they have that. They have a guy who can do some of those things. And I know they have Lynn Bowden too and stuff. You know, they've had some, some guys. But I think they have a structure to take advantage of that. One thing that's never been in doubt has been, will they, will they line up and strike you? Yes, they will. Um, I think the most dominant unit in college football is the Georgia defense at large and probably particularly the Georgia defensive line. So they're not just going to line up and run over Georgia with Rodriguez. But can they make, can they make some plays? Yes, I, th I think they will because I think, I think they'll provide a challenge, uh, challenge for Georgia for sure. Um, but I do think it's a, it's a tall task. I don't think they're going to line up and run for three bills like they have a couple of times against SEC teams. They can have a, a solid day in the mid 100s, not turn the ball over, make short yardage when they get the opportunity. I think that would be a win and the recipe for potential success for their offensive line. Reese, what are your thoughts on on the environment that is Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia? Uh, what, what's happening here with the crowd? Like two weeks ago with our, the Arkansas game, I know you were you were mm -hmm. in town and how loud it was. You know, do you think that the environment has become a little bit more elite in recent years, or has it always been this way? No, it hasn't always been this way. And I've been coming here for, I guess, my first trip here was sometime in the early 90s. So I've been coming to games in Georgia for years. And there has always been a little bit of that uh, entitled atmosphere. You know, we're supposed to win the game, entertain me, cover the spread. You know, let's have a big play or two, you know. Um, so I think there's been a little bit more energy in recent years. I think back to the Notre Dame night game, which was, uh, there was a lot, of, a lot of noise and energy in the crowd. Certainly uh, Kirby challenged the fan base for the Arkansas game and they responded. And that's not often not the case for noon kickoffs in the SEC, as you guys are, are well aware, but they answered the bell this time. So I think there has been uh, an improved atmosphere that's sort of gone hand in hand with having great players and having a lot of success. What are your thoughts on Will Levis kind of taking over this job at Kentucky and kind of leading them to a 6-0 record? And what do you think he has on the outside with Wondell Robinson and what they can do to beat some of these Georgia receivers, especially with Tyke Smith out for the rest of the season? Well, you're going to have, you know, sort of what we were talking about earlier. If you're going to move the ball against Georgia, you're not going to work it down the field with a Navy-esque 21-play drive, if you guys saw that last night. That, that's not happening. So you're going to have to get some chunk plays, some explosive plays. And I think what you have as Will Levis continues to grow and improve, he's not played a lot. I mean, he played some at Penn State and, you know, first season here in a new system. I think you're starting to see a little bit more comfort. I think as you continue to see more comfort, you'll see the turnovers start to drop a little bit, which is really key if they're going to have a chance against Georgia. But I think he's a big, strong guy who's a good athlete. He can hurt you a little bit with his feet. He doesn't back down from anything. And, and certainly, Wandell is an elite player, maybe 
uh, you know, he is as good as any receiver in the conference and among the best in the country for sure, I think. So it's the recipe. He'll have to be big because they'll need they'll need to make one-on-one plays. Will's going to have to trust him. He's going to have to, I wouldn't say throw it into coverage because that implies making a mistake. But when it's one-on-one, he's got to give his guy a chance to win. And if he does that, I think uh, you know that would be their best opportunity to try to, to try to knock off Georgia. I know we're only six games in, but how do you compare what Georgia's defense has done so far to maybe some of the best defenses of the last 10, 20 years? They're on target because they look the part, but they haven't been challenged by what I would consider an elite offense yet. Um, and it remains to be seen, though that some of the stats look really good for Kentucky, it remains to be seen whether this is the challenge or not. But you you got to also look the part. And and when you talk about elite defense, what you want yeah, baby. What you want is a guy who can get after the passer and intercept intercept passes in the middle of the air and score touchdowns up immediately like 047 did. Um, but I think right now you would be on track to compare Georgia to 2000 uh, 2011 Alabama. 2011 LSU, people forget that because of the way they lost in the national championship game. But of this generation, this era of football, those are the two that come to mind in terms of elite defenses. Alabama 2016 was really good as well. Um, so I think, um, I think that's the bar. That's the opportunity for this Georgia defense. But you've got to prove it against elite competition. There's, no, there's nothing to indicate to me from what I've seen watching, if they can't do it, it's just a matter of when they get the opportunity to be able to do it. And they look, I, as I said earlier, they are the most dominant unit in college football, and they are the reason that Georgia is not completely immune, but most immune to being knocked off, to, to having some type of awful face plant, you know, that you see, that we've seen across college football really for the entire first half of the season. They've got players. I mean, Shane Beamer. Why don't you just re-rack the Shane Beamer yeah. quote? Man, they got a hundred five stars. They got a guy that's three hundred sixty pounds that they would like to weigh weigh three hundred forty pounds, and he's running twenty miles an hour on GPS or whatever he's doing. Chases down everybody. They've got multiple pass rushers. They've got ill-tempered linebackers who who apparently have a disdain for other people in opposite colored uniforms. And they've got they've got athleticism in the back end. Um, so. They've got every ingredient, and they don't just have a front line. They can roll guys in as backups, and there's no drop-off. So every ingredient you would want to be elite, they certainly have. What's your favorite aspect of this job? You go to a different city each week in the fall? Talking to you. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Not that I don't enjoy it. <laughs> um, for someone like me that grew up loving this sport and feels like it's you know, sort of part of who I am, being able to go to different places, to go to huge games, to see great atmospheres, to watch great players, um, to take part in the great traditions and to share those. I mean, I mean, all of those things probably are the things that I enjoy most about it. And, and the fact that we have, a, we have a team and a standard here on the show every week. The show is important to us and I'd like to think that it's important to the fans and we feel that responsibility in much the same way I think that teams feel a responsibility to perform well and play well we feel the same way because there's um, you know it's important to us it's it's a reflection of our group our show our team how what type of show we put on every week so I mean that part of it is really enjoyable to me also and I get to hang out with David Pollock so that's good. George has uh, four first-year starters in their secondary. When compared to Kentucky's uh, wide receivers and passing attack, who do you think has the matchup advantage? Well, I mean, Wondell's going to have the one-on-one -on -one matchup with anybody he faces. But I think as a collectively, I mean, I don't think Georgia's secondary, even with new faces, and I, I think David pointed out last week, the two corners had decided to stay. Imagine how, how – I, I don't know if they could have been better. It would have been more experienced, I guess. But uh, I, I think Georgia's, Georgia's secondary can match up with anybody. But if you ask me, is there a guy one-on-one -on -one who I think can take Wondell out of the game, I don't think, I don't expect that to happen. So, but I do think they can hold their own with anyone.
Reese, no one really expected this to be the game this week, but Kentucky obviously carrying up a lot better than people thought. What does Kentucky having the success mean for the SEC in college football? It shows, I mean, I think everyone for a long time has believed that the SEC always has depth year in and year out. I think it shows depth in a, in a different place. You know, Kentucky has been, has been really solid, has been really good, but now they have the opportunity to, to build it up another notch because that's how you do it. As you get in games like this with the high stakes and you win one that's more than an upset. There are a lot of people, I mean, look, no, you know, I mean anything bad to Appalachian State. Appalachian State beat Michigan that year, and I mean, it was great for their program. It was good, but that was an upset. That didn't mean Appalachian State was, you know, a contender for the Big Ten title. I mean, they weren't in the Big Ten, I understand that, but you know what I mean. There are upsets. There are teams every week that really have no business beating another team, and they do so. Kentucky, Kentucky has always been, in recent years, good for an upset, but now, can you take that? Because you have to be good to do that. Can you take that level of being good enough to upset someone, and now, when everyone's expecting it, come in and win the game? That's part of building your program and taking taking your program to a higher level. So I think that's uh, uh, that's probably the most significant thing for Kentucky being on this stage right now is that it is, it is an opportunity. Doesn't mean they have to win or we go oh same old Kentucky. They have a chance to to winning would be great, but if they show themselves to be wildly competitive, then you you go hmm you know maybe they are a contender. Maybe I. Maybe they don't even drop in the polls. If Kentucky loses, you know, by a field goal Saturday, why would you drop them? Maybe you raise them. Maybe you know, maybe they're even a higher ranked team at the end of it. So there's some credibility at stake. And let me be clear about that because that makes it sound like they don't have any. There is another level of credibility at stake and an opportunity for Kentucky on Saturday. I think. If they pull it off Saturday, do you think that would be like a program defining win to come oh. into Athens and pull it off? Yes, for sure. It would be an era-defining game. It might be the greatest win in Kentucky history, right? I mean, I mean uh, Coach Bryant had a lot back in the day and all of that, but it might be the best win in Kentucky history. But the thing that then you would have to evaluate is how do you build on that? How do you sustain that? Now, all of a sudden, if Kentucky wins the game, they're top five or top three or number one. You know what I mean? That wouldn't be crazy if if Kentucky wins the game Saturday, I'm an AP voter. I will consider voting them number one because who else do you think can do that? You know, I don't know. So, but at, at worst, they're going to be top five, top three or four, and that's some pretty rarefied air if they're able to do it. So I think for sure it's a program and a regime and an era-defining win if they can pull it off Saturday. What do you think would have to happen for them? For them to pull it off, well, they're minus they're minus eight in turnovers. They cannot be minus anything in turnovers. Uh, they'll need chunk plays. They'll probably need a 100-yard receiving game or something thereabouts from Wondell Robinson, and they'll need to be able to run effectively. I don't know what that is, but that's like I said earlier. That's probably converting short yardage at right times. They're not going to convert them all, but they need to be able to run some and make some chunk plays. And then the defense, which is you know top 15, I think, in yards per play, they're, they'll have to control Georgia's running game. And if they're able to do that, that would be the recipe for them to, to try to knock, it, knock off the dogs. Awesome. Thanks, All right, thank, thank you.